Uh, welcome back to a new video or another video. If you've been following along with the previous Fusion First SolidWorks uh, videos, this might look familiar. Uh, what I've done is, without showing it, I've exported our pause drive bit as a step. We're going to upload that and measure it up, basically regenerate the sketches that were used to, uh, to make it re-engineering, if you want to think of it that way. Upload. So go to your, <clears throat> excuse me, file location in your data panel and pick upload. I'm going to be able to see what's going on here. So I have the step in my downloads. Just drag it in. It'll review what it thinks it is. Uh, if it shows a little icon that looks solid model, everything looks right. Uh, you can add more stuff here. Once you're happy, just press upload. Uh, we're gonna wait for this to go. This is an education license. It, uh, we're at the leisure of the server. Uh, you can close this as it's running. If you wanna see it again, click the little icon on the lower right of the data panel. You'll notice you've got other options here. It shows it complete. And once the icon arrives, it's ready to go, double click it. Now, what's going on here? Uh, it turns it into uh, Fusion Design and it's imported from a step. So this is now a Fusion part. One thing to notice, and this may or may not be important, there's no history by default. To turn on the history, right click at the top. Sorry, again, up here at the top level. Capture Design History turns it on, you see the base feature created, which is the import of the solid, uh, undated, uh, simple BREP geometry. Um, what we're essentially after here is to try and figure out what somebody did to generate this part. There's two main tools here, the measure tool, and a bunch of other things are in here, section analysis, so on and so forth, ISO curves, all the rest. The other main tool is actually surprisingly the sketch. So let's just figure out how measure works. Measure is shortcut I on the keyboard. And what you can do is just measure various things. So for example, this edge will show as a radius, which from our previous videos is a little familiar, diameter, radius, length, it's not exactly one because it's curved. But if we go in here and measure from point to point, we should expect to see one. If we want to see X, Y, Z, delta, which just corresponds to the view cube up here. Uh, again, if you hover usefully, it shows you these uh, things. For example, if I click away, I can also restart. The X, Y, delta is very useful for things in space. However, this is maybe not everything we need and it doesn't give us a coherent uh, view of the part. One thing we can use to get a sort of a, what do we say, a long lived measurement is to actually use a sketch. Now, if you're lucky, it might show up align to the orthogonal axes and all the planes that are derived from there. We don't often get that, or sometimes we don't. It's safer sometimes to just draw right on the object. The easy one here is the underside. Let's put a sketch on the underside of the part and use project. So I can type S, project, project anything. Two is a sketch. It would be, I could go around and pick all these edges, or I can just project this entire surface. If I hide the body, I can start using the dimension tool to discover what this is. It's going to say driven. Yep. Because it's driven by the body. So we can see this here, 6.35 millimeters, which we can, I hope, understand as inch quarter. If we want, we can change it to inch for the document. 
and all of a sudden we get a cork. Nice. Problem is with this, a lot of the part we know is millimeter, so let's switch it back. That sounds and looks good. That's probably all we're going to get from here. Maybe a diameter. Let's try this. Oh, this. <laughs> Wrong thing there, bud. There we go, five. That looks good. Finish the sketch, turn on the body. Now, again, we are aligned to the orthogonal axes, all the rest, but sometimes we're not going to be. Let's create a plane to sketch on. Now there's two plane, lots of planes, lots of ways to do a plane. How about plane through two edges? We could pick these two edges. Nice. Once the plane is created, you can actually drag it a little bigger if you wish by grabbing the corners. Let's make sure it's nice and symmetrical. Now, what? As soon as we sketch on this, we get an unexpected benefit of this, which is create sketch. If we turn on slice right over here, sorry, can't really see that slice. It actually slices the part for us. If we turn slice off and go to the other side, it'll do it the opposite direction and stick like that. And now you're thinking, well, who cares? The big advantage of this is now we can use our project tool. So project. Where is that? Let's have a look actually. Selector, project, include, project. The shortcut is P and it projects the body silhouette. So that's our original. So let's go for P. Can we project everything? Let's see. Sometimes the slicing hides the projection. What does that do? Let's hide the body. Not ultra useful. So that might not be what we want. However, we can project other things. So for example, we could project this surface here. Right, so we have to be careful what we're projecting here. So if I project that, I notice what I get. This is the outside curve and the edge of the surface. So which one are we after? Let's put a dimension to that. So let's go for the one on the right. Oh, let's get that again. And the origin. Now notice the origin is all over the place, right? So one thing we have to do is project the center of the base. Nice. So now we can start drawing on here. So we have a center line. So let's go vertical, turn it into a center line. We might want to make it controlled for some reason. Let's put it, let's stick it straight across from there. There we go. Now I can go to the outside point, inside, very driven. Nice. That looks very familiar. So we can go ahead and do this all the way around if we wish. So for example, we could project this surface like so, P again. Find the body. No, it's, I want this curve. I'm trying to figure out the curve. So that's not what I want. Is there a different type of project? There's an intersection here. I wonder what that does. How about this intersection? Aha, nice. Now that gives us something useful. Let's 
right up here. So let's do it, do it again, intersect. Now I'm going to use this all the time. I'm going to put it in my shortcut bar. And I can just click it direct. Right, that is in fact what I wanted the first time. So let's try double clicking this guy. Just gonna delete my previous attempts. Actually, I can delete everything just to get everything organized here. Let's try that again. So, this intersect the body. That's what I'm after. Might have to rebuild some stuff, it's not a big deal. So now let's try connecting these just with our own line. Now, what is this looking like? Again, measure six millimeters. Is it vertical? Yep, zero, zero, and the deltas are zeros. Perfect. So we're working our way along. Turn the body back on. And we can try using this new master measuring tool called the intersect for curved surfaces. And may as well do them all. It doesn't work on straight lines. Hide the body. And if we want, we can fill it in. And there we go. Everything's working out well. Does it work on everything? Surprisingly, yes. Let's see what we got here. That might take a little extra work because it's not completely sure what it's doing. Let's see if it gave us the curvature. Uh, this, if we remember back to the video, is, it doesn't really matter what it is, as long as they're the same, we see this behavior here. It's perfect. There we go. We can now regenerate the sketch that drove this part. Now, some of you might be watching this thinking, well, all, all our requirements are done now. Sometimes it's a little hard to figure out exactly what was behind somebody's thinking, right? So you have to be a little bit adventurous, perhaps. I don't know if that's the right word. Try and figure out what exactly they were up to. The, the logic, if there is any, hopefully there is because we're not using this as a actual thing, we're making our own part most of the time for reverse engineering. This just simply informs us what the sketch should probably look like. All right, we've got a messy history down here, but you know, not bad. So we end up with a reasonable uh, understanding of what we're actually looking at here. There it is. That's how we would go ahead here and start defining and reverse engineering our, uh, in this case, STL body, which is just given to us. Uh, from here, we can make some changes, uh, re oh, sorry, remodel the part, do the changes, do some simulations, whatever is required, and we're off to the races. That's about it for measuring up. Again, the three main tools, it turns out in the end is measure, I, and then inside of, just reactivate a sketch here, inside of sketch project is project, a silhouette, and an intersect, which is where the body in this case intersects the sketch plane. 
This really depends on where you pick the sketch plane. Uh, so you have to be a little careful when you're generating, in this case, the plane that we're going to sketch on. That is quite a big decision. That's it for me. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, once you're done, as usual, just close your part. It will do an autosave. And you'll have two parts. So 14 minutes ago is when I started it, and two seconds ago is when we saved it. Thanks for watching. Over to you.